Hello, my name is Dr. David Zipperly. I am a thoracic surgeon, which means a lung surgeon. I am the managing physician for Penn Medicine Lancaster General Hospital and the Ann B. Barsinger Cancer Institute. Additionally, I am the team leader for thoracic oncology, which encompasses um, all of the aspects of prevention and diagnosis and treatment for lung cancer. I have been in practice just short of 30 years, and over that 30 years, I have seen great changes in the prevalence of lung cancer uh, amongst women uh, and different ways that lung cancer is treated. Uh, we have many more sophisticated uh, diagnostic and treatment opportunities now than we did decades ago. Probably the most important thing that we have noticed is that Lung cancer used to be uh, thought of as a man's disease. Um, men worked in industry, in factories and in coal mines, which put them at risk for lung cancer. And smoking about four decades ago used to be a man's activity. Uh, that's why we had advertisements of Joe Camel and the Marlboro Man and uh, other tobacco uh, products such as that. But about four decades ago, women uh, found smoking to be somewhat attractive. And over the last four decades, we've now seen a real increase in the number of women with lung cancer. At the same time, we've seen a little bit of a decrease in the number of lung cancer in men because of better safety requirements in industry and some smoking cessation programs. So now, lung cancer is almost equal in both men and women. And we actually believe now that if you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. So it is not male or female related anymore. Now there are real differences in the behavior of the lung cancer between men and women. So for instance, in women, lung cancer has a very high um, rate of death. In fact, it's not the number one cancer in women, breast cancer still is, but the number of women who die from lung cancer exceeds the combined number of women who die from breast, uterine, and ovarian cancer combined. Additionally in women, um, we see about 20% of women who develop lung cancer have never been smokers, and that's a bit unusual. Um, so. In the last several decades, a lot of research has gone into trying to figure out why that occurs. And the answer is, we're not quite sure. Um, but we know that about 20% of women who are non-smokers develop lung cancer. Um, in that group, some of the theories have uh, circled around environmental factors. Maybe air pollution plays a factor. Maybe women are spending more time um, running errands and doing carpools and stuck in traffic um, and breathing toxic fumes of some sort. Radon, which is a natural occurring gas in the uh, ground, it's a radioactive gas, has also been a factor um, and it's thought that compared to men, maybe women spend more time at home so they're exposed to radon. They think that perhaps it's a genetic problem, but that has not been borne out yet. And perhaps it's related to hormonal levels like estrogen. So, so far that research is continuing, but we don't know the real cause. Now the good news is, for whatever reason, women who are non-smokers, their tumor um, is again different from a man's tumor. So most men de develop what's called squamous cell cancer. And that's a cancer that favors kind of the central portion of the lung near the main airways. And women predominantly get a type of cancer called adenocarcinoma, which lives more toward the edge of the lung or is located more toward the edge of the lung. Many women who are non-smokers who have adenocarcinoma are candidates for what are called targeted therapies or immunotherapy. And the results of that has been extremely well. 
So that is one uh, key difference and an advantage to treatment and survivability for women who have lung cancer compared to men. So the real question comes up, how do we figure out who is at risk for lung cancer? And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, everyone is at risk for lung cancer, whether you're a smoker or a non-smoker. And we have to sort of, sort of figure out um, what symptoms should we be looking for. In men, most men have a cough. Some of them will cough up um, blood or blood to sputum because their tumor is located next to the main airways. Um, women don't seem to have those issues. Women's tumors, again, are located more toward the edge of the lung. And because of its location at the edge as opposed to the center of the lung, they rarely have episodes where they cough up blood. Instead, women may have problems with um, a lot of fatigue that would be unusual for them, unexplained weight loss, um, or they may have recurrent pneumonias. Um, so if you have any of those things, you should be contacting your physician, your primary care physician, and saying, you know, I'm just not right, I don't know why, I'm extra fatigued, I have this chronic cough, because those are subtle symptoms that may be um, diagnostic that you have something going on. And that's really similar to how women present with heart problems as well. So not all women get crushing chest pain when they're having a heart attack. They sometimes have flu-like symptoms that just don't seem to go away. So again, there's a difference between men and women. For women who are smokers or who have been smokers, it's very important to find out if you qualify for what's called a CT lung screening scan. And that's a simple scan um, that's done annually as long as you do not have symptoms and you're between the ages of 55 and 80 and have been a smoker within the past 15 years. Um, that is our best method of detecting if you have a hidden lung cancer because if we can find it earlier, your chances of cure and survivability are much higher. We're very fortunate at, at uh, Lancaster General that we've had the first uh, lung cancer screening program uh, in the area. Uh, in fact, it has been in, in place for many years and we've screened over 6,000 people and about 2% of those people have hidden lung cancers. Um, so the outcomes from that have been very good. Uh, it's a very much no risk uh, procedure that takes about 15 minutes to have done. And then you rest assured that your lungs are um, in good shape, similar to getting a pap smear or a mammogram or screening colonoscopy. When you do have a lung cancer or a suspicion of lung cancer, the question comes up, what is the best treatment for that? And there is no one size fits all. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you seek the opinion of a group of specialists who focus on diagnosis and treatment of lung cancer. We call that a multidisciplinary team. So that's a team that is made up of pulmonologists, and medical oncologists and radiation oncologists and surgeons and social workers and nurse navigators and a whole host of other things because this is a journey that you need full support on um, so that all of your needs are covered. Um, here at the Ambie Barsinger Cancer Institute we are very fortunate to have really state-of-the-art radiation uh, therapy services in fact, in about a year or so, we're actually adding proton services uh, as well. Uh, we will be one of only a handful of centers in the whole nation that has that opportunity uh, and availability for treatment of cancers like lung cancers with proton therapy. Uh, through our affiliation with uh, Penn, uh, we have access to uh, immunotherapy and clinical trials, which are extremely important from a medical oncology standpoint, especially for women, because again, women's lung cancer is uh, different than a man's lung cancer and how it responds to treatment. So those are very important uh, aspects of care. 
From a surgical standpoint, uh, we are one of the most experienced minimally invasive robotic surgery programs in the country. Um, our patients do extremely well and our length of stay in the hospital from a lung cancer surgery is roughly about two days and your recovery time is about one to two weeks. So if you should ever need our services, we've got the full spectrum available to you. Um, so in summary, I would leave you with a couple of um, take home points. One is that lung cancer in women is increasing and has been increasing. Lung cancer in women is not identical to lung cancer in men. Symptoms are different. Sometimes they're very uh, vague, uh, quiet, quiescent symptoms instead of obvious symptoms of coughing up blood and shortness of breath. The treatment is often different because women um, are candidates, especially non-smoking women, for treatments such as targeted therapy and immunotherapy. Um, if you are a smoker or one of your female relatives or friends are smokers, get them to quit. That's the best thing they can do and have them uh, uh, consider having a CT lung screening scan if they qualify um, to uh, find and detect problems early rather than late. Um, I hope you found that informative. If we can be of help to you uh, answering additional questions for you, please contact us. Thank you for your time.